Okay, welcome to a video on aspects of economic development. We're going to be asking the question, does microfinance encourage development? Now, this is Dr. Mohammed Yunus, who was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for founding the Grameen Bank and pioneering the concepts of microcredit and microfinance back in the mid-1970s. Mohammed Yunus began experimenting with the idea of providing small loans to very poor households who'd, who'd lacked access to, to usual commercial banking services. So he started by lending just small, tiny amounts of money to poor villagers in Jobra, a rural village near Chittagong in Bangladesh. And the relative success of this experiment led to the founding of the Grameen Bank in 1983. Now, that's since become a, a global model for microfinance. A microfinance refers to the provision, the supply of financial services. It could be a loan, it could be a savings deposit account, it could be insurance to a farmer, to individuals and businesses who are traditionally and typically excluded from banking services. They're sometimes known as the, the unbankable. So the aim of microfinance is basically to help very poor households and small businesses improve their living standards, become a little bit more self-sufficient by giving them the financial tools they need to start or expand a business, invest in education, perhaps even uh, improve their housing. And microfinance uh, has uh, certainly grown and scaled globally. Uh, in 2020, the total loan portfolio was just under $140 billion, and there were 10,000 microfinance institutions, lenders across the world, many of whom are in Southeast Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. But there are also some microfinance lenders in advanced high-income countries too. It's estimated by the IMF that microfinance provided financial services to over 200 million people globally in 2020. And the assets of the industry are just under $200 billion. So this is a sizable and a significant and a scaled industry. Uh, it belies its name, doesn't it? Microfinance has scaled its size. And some good examples. I, I'd always start with Bangladesh, a country that examiners love to choose when setting questions. Highly populous country, strong in textiles and uh, farming, increasingly now emerging financial services as incomes go up. The Grameen Bank was founded by Yunus, and today they serve millions of low-income individuals and businesses. So Bangladesh is a good example. So to India, a couple of examples there, the Self-Employed Women's Association and Sardan Network. Sardan, the name means small steps in Hindi, and that, that reflects the organisation's focus on providing just small loans and other insurance services and things to poor and low-income households and communities. Uh, in Peru, Finca, Finca Peru, uh, it's part of the Finca International Network, which is a big organisation that operates in certainly about 20, 25, maybe even 30 countries. So in many nations, microfinance is well established. So what are the advantages of microfinance? Well, first of all, it gives people who previously could not afford to or weren't given access to credit some degree of uh, of access to credit. So micro loans, provide loans to people who would not normally have access to it, allow them maybe to start a business maybe fun buying a lathe or buying a sewing machine or or uh, improving the, the housing stock, some other way in which they can use the money, hopefully for investment purposes. And then, of course, that can kickstart a multiplier effect, can't it? Very important that you link microfinance to gender inequality. Microfinance programmes tend to target women who historically have been excluded from financial services, often the result of social and cultural norms. So giving them access to credit and the associated training can act as a tool, an instrument of economic empowerment and improve their economic and social status. And hopefully, over the long term, microfinance can help in alleviating, reducing the scale of extreme poverty. So raising per capita incomes, allowing households to save a bit more, creating more jobs in the formal economy, particularly in those parts of the economy which have the lowest economic activity and income per capita. On the other hand, microfinance is, uh, although it's, it can be an effective strategy uh, for economic development and poverty reduction, it's not a panacea, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution, and it doesn't always work. One point I made when I was teaching this topic is to say that a small loan isn't necessarily a cheap loan. So microfinance lenders can often charge quite high interest rates to compensate maybe for the risk of lending to 
to families who are not necessarily part of the formal economy. And that can make it hard for borrowers to repay their loans, perhaps push them further into poverty. And there's a possible risk that those people who haven't had access to credit before may overextend themselves. They may become over-indebted by taking out multiple loans. And that can lead to quite a good degree of financial stress, particularly in countries that hit tough times. And the wider issue, I think, is whether microfinance is a game changer. Does it have a long-term positive effect on poverty reduction, employment and development? Well, critics argue that microfinance on its own is not a panacea, it's not a cure-all, and that you need a mix of other interventions, including direct cash transfers. We'll do a a video on that, which might be more impactful at cutting poverty in the long term. Indeed, in Kenya, the number of people with a, a loan from an institution in microfinance has actually fallen since 2010, quite sharply. It's less than half the size it once was. There have been several changes in Kenya's economy and they've toughened up the regulation of microfinance. So things like interest rate caps and requirements for loan approvals become tougher. And that's made it harder for the lenders to, to give credit to certain borrowers. Uh, and some borrowers have actually left the market Kenya, of course, has suffered from high inflation, high unemployment, volatile growth. That hasn't made it easy for the, for the microfinance sector. So microfinance on its own, it's an important idea. It's a, a key little area of the development syllabus to be aware of. I think on its own, in isolation, it will always have a relatively limited impact on growth and poverty reduction. So you need to combine it maybe with other things. So one aspect is microcredit plus. So in Bangladesh, for example, BRAC provides microfinance, healthcare and education to low-income communities. a kind of one-shop one approach with some credit, some healthcare, some education, uh, maternal programmes, uh, base, teaching basic financial literacy and numeracy, etc. So you've got, to, you've got to see microfinance, I think, as part of a broader, a wider uh, landscape for trying to cut extreme poverty. But it does have a role to play. A paper by Yahya published in the Global Journal of Management and Business Research, said from the research findings, results revealed that microfinance has a significant role to play in the economy. It helps reduce poverty by providing financial services to the active poor, hoping in generating employment and providing small loans to grow small businesses. Positive there, slightly less effusive. Uh, Mosley's paper in 2001, a little time ago now, looking at Bolivia. In comparison with other anti-poverty measures, Microfinance appears to be successful and relatively cheap, but ineffective by comparison with labour market and infrastructural measures in reducing extreme poverty. So training and better infrastructure from water and sanitation to telecoms perhaps have a, have a bigger impact. But there we go, microfinance, a nice little mini topic. Make sure you've got this as part of your revision notes on economic development. Thanks for joining in. If you found this useful, Please press like and maybe subscribe to the channel. We don't take that for granted. We, we, we always say thank you. We always reply, by the way, to comments. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay curious, and see you sometime soon.